What's up guys, Leaf right here. Welcome to the channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Canon EOS R6 Mark I and whether you can use that as your main video camera. So make sure you guys stay tuned, do not go anywhere. All right guys, welcome back. So like I said, we're gonna be talking about the Canon EOS R6 Mark I and whether you can use this camera as your main video shooter. I can make this video really quick and just say, yes, you can. But that's not what you guys came here for. So let's get into some of the reasons why. This camera, can definitely be your main video shooter because to be honest, this camera and many other cameras that's come out in the past four, five years can be your main video shooters and you can create great content with those cameras as long as you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't matter if you have the most expensive camera in the world, your stuff's gonna look like shit. So you have to know how to use the camera. You have to know what your camera's strengths are. You have to know what their weaknesses are. And with this camera, I know what its strengths is and I know what its weaknesses are. So without further ado, let's talk about why I think this thing is good for video and you can use it as your main video shooter. All right, for number one, it's used internal 10 bit 4K at 60 frames per second with a very, very small crop, 1.05 times crop. You don't get that with some of the others, <clears throat> A7 IV. <clears throat> S5 and I'm not throwing shade at those cameras. They are great cameras. They are awesome cameras They do a great job for photo and video. I'm just saying if you want 4k 60 basically full frame and Having a 1.5 times crop on 4k 60 is Something as a deal break for you. Well, this thing does it and yeah You can get the R6 mark II, but you're gonna be spending a little bit more money and if you're on a budget again It's not budget budget friendly, but you know it <laughs> you can get this thing for a good deal. So but I digress, we're, gonna, we're getting kind of off topic. Again, 4K 60, internal 10 bit. You can shoot C-Log 1, C-Log 3. You don't get C-Log 2, they save that. It looks like for only their cinema line of cameras that I've seen, so. But C-Log 3, I recommend using if you know how to color grade it. Uh, you can get plenty of dynamic range. You get great results out of it. Again, if you know what you're doing. I'm gonna show you guys a little short video at the end of this video so you guys can see some of the results you can get with this camera. Uh, another positive, amazing autofocus. Canon is known for their autofocus and this camera does not disappoint in that area. Another reason, you do get some video centric features. We're gonna touch back on this in the negatives. You know, you do get your get your, uh, you get your histogram that kind of, you know, helps you with your exposure. So that's good. You can put that on screen so you can kind of see where your exposure's at. Uh, so you can nail that. So that is definitely something nice. Uh, if you're doing manual focus, they have the manual focus assist on this, which is awesome. Basically, it's just like a crosshair and turns green once everything's in focus. Focus. That's to me when I've had the manual focus of this thing. That is thing that is a lifesaver. So that is another positive. Another thing is how user friendly this camera is. It's you know if you're not real familiar with how to go through camera systems, this thing is definitely very user friendly. Canon cameras are very user friendly, so that is definitely another positive. Another thing, the build quality of this camera. This thing, you can take it out and shoots, you can drop it, and it's probably gonna hold up. This thing has a, a superb build quality. It's been my favorite build quality of any camera I've ever owned. If you want super slow motion, it doesn't have a 4K, it has a 1080p, 120 frames per second, and it still has the autofocus. Some people don't like it, some people say it's a little mushy or noisy. I don't use it that much, but when I have used it, I've been, okay, I've been happy with the results. So if you want that super slow motion, you have that option. Another thing, I've used this thing on pretty much all my professional shoots I've had this year minus one where I use the Canon C100 Mark I and it's held up perfectly. Clients have been very happy with the results they've gotten. So I mean <laughs> the camera is great for video. If, for those people that say oh you can't use this as a video camera I, I, I think that's that's bullshit. No, no offense if you're one of the people that say that. It's still a great video camera and you can get amazing results with this. Now let's talk about some of the negatives. To me my biggest negatives, I'm gonna talk about other people's negatives, but I'm talking about my negatives. I don't like that you don't have shutter angle. Um, I don't like that you don't can't have custom video modes. You can only have custom photo modes on this camera. I thought that's stupid for Canon to do it that way. I don't know why they did it that way. So that, that that's definitely a frustration for me. They fit, they remedied that on the R6 Mark II, but they I don't know why they put the cripple hammer on that for this one for the uh, uh, custom video modes. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, shutter angle, I think every camera that shoots video, high quality video, should have the option to do shutter angle. Panasonic is like the only camera cup that I'm aware of that puts that in their camera, like all of their cameras. Sony doesn't do it. Canon doesn't do it. I, I can't speak on Nikon, but 
Yeah, that, I think that's bullshit. It's stupid. Um, the overheating issue, I'm not gonna sit here and say it's not a thing, it is, it does exist. I've never experienced it in all the time I've had, and I've had this camera for over a year. Yeah, I've used it and it, you know, it starts getting warm, but I've never had it shut off for overheating. I've never gotten the overheating warning. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, I have personally never experienced it. The last thing that a lot of people don't like, and again, doesn't affect me personally, but it might affect you and it might be a reason to, for you not to buy this camera, is the 30 minute record limit. Again, I don't shoot 30 minute straight uh, content, so it doesn't really affect me, but for you, it, it might affect you. So if that's a deal breaker, you, know, you might wanna look at the R6 Mark II or some other camera brand that you know, is gonna fit that need for you. I mean, that's, to me, again, it's not a big issue. If it becomes a big issue, you know, I might have to look at other options, but right now, as of now, it, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Oh, and I wanted to, let's talk about one more positive. I know we just finished up with the negative. Low light performance on this camera is great. It's not A7S three levels of low light, but it's really good. I can push the ISO on this thing all the way. I push it all the way up to 12,800. Yes, there is some noise, but it's very usable. It's not breaking down the image. It doesn't look like crap. It still works and it's definitely usable footage. So the ISO performance on this is very good. I think it, I've I think I've seen videos where it's actually better than the R5s, but I don't can't personally tell you that because I haven't used the R5. But I know low light performance on this camera is awesome. So I want to put that pause. I almost forgot. I don't I don't jot things down. I just kind of go off the top of my head. So I didn't want you guys to leave without hearing the low light performance. And you also had the internal. Or you also have the IBIS and it's a very good ibis um, if you put on the wide angle lens or the ultra wide you can see that wobble a little bit uh, i usually there's very few shots that i have that's just the ultra wide um but i have seen it a little bit so that is a negative you do get that ibis wobble just a little bit but to me it hasn't affected any of my shoots because i'm using more you know semi-wide 24 35 50 and 85 you know it's kind of different uh focal lengths that i'm using when i shoot my content so it hasn't really affected me but if it could affect you so i just wanted to throw that out there so overall, yes, I definitely think you can use this thing as your main video shooter. Yes, does it have its negatives? Yes, of course it does. Every camera does. There's not one camera out there that does not have negatives. It just really depends if this camera fits all the needs that you need, and for me, it does. And for those people that say it's not a good video camera, well, feel free to disagree with me. I personally don't care. So anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I'm gonna show you guys the footage that I shot on this thing and let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys next time I make a video. Have a good one.